Can you hear me? Because I don't think we can hear you.
Can you guys hear me?
I got it now. I'm sorry. I'm talking. I've got a hangout going on. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Okay, cool. All right. I um, broke the computer. Oh, good. I have no mouse. That's like, can I hear my wonderful Valley Today theme music? And I don't know if I had this thing sitting here, right? And it won't, it's totally dead now. So I could reboot. Probably a hub under there with USBs. Oh God. Should I plug and replug? When you How are you? How are you doing, Larry? I think I think Matt should reboot it. Can I just reboot it? I've broken all the computers. How do you reboot and not turn off? With the you know what I mean? Oh, I forgot. It's um. Yeah, it's not. It's not from the old age. It's XP. I know. Just wing it, man. Just wing it. You want to sing it? If you need music, we can sing. You could bring that band back. <laughs> That killer acoustic bluegrass act. No, we can't do that anymore. Mario told you don't do that again. Are you serious? Well, when we tried to do it in Royal's computers, it just didn't work. It was one mic phone, and you got the bass way back over here. You know, you couldn't get them close to that. It worked great in here. I remember. I can do that again. I mean, I'm I'm a sub. I have no, no authority. I'll, I'll run it by Mario before I try it again. <laughs> What is it? Yeah, Swift. Jimmy Swift. Yeah, I remember there was a kid. I, I could lay on a heart and look up the chimney and see the nest up there, you know. And, uh, you'd see the tail streaming from fucking fish down at the beach. This computer is slow. Despite these changes, still good. local radio and television still reach more people than all other forms of media combined. And their websites no. are among the Not most popular sites around. Local radio and television. Hey, Dan, what's up? What's up, man? I um, I had it muted. It oh. Been, my mic was muted. It should have been uh, more prominent. You know, there should have been a little red warning thing throughout every time you see it. All right, I'm back. 
Well, welcome back. Yeah, I cut out. I had to switch access points going through the school. Here we go. <coughs> Folks, welcome. I'm Ian McDermott. This is The Valley Today on a Tourism <coughs> Tuesday. Joining me, uh, this is bringing back some memories. Don Lefebvre from the Front Royal Tourism Visitors Center Con well, well, Expo well, have, Big Giant Down Stadium. there on Main Street. Huh? <laughs> Glad to be back, Dan. It's good to see you again. I haven't seen you in quite a while. It's, I, I don't think you have any audio. Let me see what I did here. Okay. I've broken... Uh, you spoke. Well, you were on. I just Better tested way. it before. Okay, it sounds good to me. Okay, it's just... Michael Smith, Jr. Okay, anyway, uh, yeah, I have a guest with me today, and we've got a, one of my favorite subjects today we're going to talk about. And I have Jennifer Sait here from the Shenandoah River State Park, or Eamon R. Andy Guest, Jr., Shenandoah River State Park. I found out, if you try to read that sign when you, you know, you're looking for it, you're going to wind up in the raid before you finish. It's, uh, if you hit Bentonville, you've gone too far. That's right. That's the best thing to remember. If you're coming south. <laughs> but anyway, we have Jennifer here, and she is going to tell us about a great program they have coming up, which really feeds right down into my, one of my favorite hobbies. Jennifer, welcome. Thank you very much, Don. Yeah, tell us what, uh, about our, what, well, the event that you have coming up here. What is it, 16? Yep, on Martin Luther King Day, we are having our Winter Birds program. Uh, this will be the second year that we've done it, and last year it was really successful. Uh, we had lots of children and families come, and they really loved it. Well, I tell you what, if, if you aren't into birding, you're missing a big, big treat. That is one of the most interesting things I've ever seen. Birds are so doggone civilized anyway. They, uh, they, many of them mate for life, like doves, they mate for life. Mm -hmm. um, um, the, the house finches, I believe, do about the same thing, and that's one of my favorites. But there's so many different ones, and they're so colorful that really they can brighten up a winter day better than just about anything I can imagine. It would be a great thing to come down to the park. And what are we going to do that day? Well, it begins at 10 o'clock at the visitor center, mm -hmm. and um, kids will be able to make homemade bird feeders to take home mm -hmm. to track birds to their own yard. Uh, we have a lot of bird <laughs> feeders behind the visitor center. And so now, now I want to distinguish. That's the Shenandoah River State Park Visitor Center, not that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, they will be able to uh, observe the birds through the windows. Oh, I see. Um, and we have <coughs> binoculars they can use, and we're going to learn how to identify the different um, species that are back there, and actually learn their sounds as well. Now you talk about different species. Do uh, you have a number approximately how many different species they're likely to see? Well, um, on a day-to-day -day basis, we see a variety of woodpeckers, uh, chickadees, uh, tufted titmice, um, goldfinch, I mean, doves. There's, there's a lot of different birds that visit those feeders. Northern flickers. Yeah, northern flickers. Isn't the tufted uh, titmice, isn't that the one that looks like a sort of a bleached out cardinal? I mean, it has a little top yes, and everything. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. But uh, they, are, they have the neatest little chirp, little sounds. The sounds that come from these things are so distinct, and that's one thing that I'd love to be able to do is learn from the sounds because uh, each one of them is distinct and different. They and are. it's it's, it's uh, germane to the species. In other words, each one of them has the, the species has its own sound, and, which makes it possible to, to stand there and listen and tell what kind of birds you have. Exactly. But we have a bunch of um, taxidermy birds, mm -hmm. and so we put those out, and so the kids can see them up close and hear their sounds as they're looking at them and then, you know, observe them outside. Yeah, it's one of the greatest settings in the world. Here we are right on the Shenandoah River um, in, in a forested area right at the base of the Shenandoah National Park and also at the base of the George Washington National Forest, yes. uh, the, the uh, Mass Nutton Mountain. And uh, I'm, uh, how many birds do you say you have through there, uh, different species, I mean, roughly? Oh, gosh, I mean, 
probably, you mean at the bird feeders yes, on a day-to-day -day uh, basis? I would say probably maybe 10 to 15 regular visitors. And sometimes we'll get hawks uh, back there, red-tailed hawks. Oh, yeah. Um, and also, you can go to the river and see the uh, great blue heron. We have the little green oh, wow. heron. Yeah. We've been seeing eagles this year. You know, that's a magnificent sight. I was, I had the pleasure of doing a canoe trip with a group of uh, travel writers a few years ago, and a bald eagle uh, made a catch right in front of us. <laughs> that is an awesome sight. See him come or soaring in and lower his landing gear and all of a sudden, wham, he's got himself a fish. You know, it really is awesome. Was that around here? Yeah. Wow. Down on the... I've seen them, but I've never seen one <laughs> catch anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was down uh, at about seven miles south of... Well, I did the seven-hour trip uh, uh, out of uh, Bentonville, and it was along that, that route. But what a gorgeous day. To, I mean, a great, a great way to spend the day. Shenandoah River State Park. Let's talk a little bit about that. You've got some new things down here. You've got some camping cabins that are awesome. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of local people. We have one of our, our people at the visitor center. That's her vacation. She gets a cabin at Shenandoah River State Park. It's air conditioned in the summer, <laughs> which is kind of hard to say that's camping, but it is camping. But it's, it's true, isn't it? Yeah, well, we have a variety of accommodations depending on what you want to do. We have, you know, a tent campground, an RV campground. Mm -hmm. um, fully furnished, air-conditioned cabins, and also camping cabins, which are a little more rustic. Tell me, uh, do you have a problem with the squirrels getting into your bird food? Yes. <laughs> kind of thing. They probably just as much of the food as the birds do. Yeah, and they're the hardest things to keep away. They, uh, and they're very imaginative. They can get to the bird feeders that are impossible to get to. I'm, yeah, I can tell you that from my own front yard. And we've we've also had some problems with the bears this year, mm. um, getting to the bird feeders and actually ripping them down. I've, yeah, I've heard a lot of war stories about that. People I've worked with have uh, bird feeders in their backyard that they thought were high enough the bear would never get them, but they get them. They do. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Why don't we uh, take a quick break, okay, Don? Is that cool? Yeah, and that's a good if, idea. If you're interested, uh, what's the website for Front Royal? First of all, for your visitor center. The website is the visit Front Royal. Uh, it just you can look up Front Royal Virginia and go to the tourism, and it'll tell you everything you need to know about us and the schedules of events and so forth that are um, set up down the line. And we're going to have a very busy year this year. Looking forward to it. Okay, and also there's a great website for the state. Uh, it's DGIF, uh, but if you yeah. just Google Shenandoah River State Park or Andy Guest Park and try to find that state website, it's got all the information, pictures, you can reserve a cabin or just get, and it's really inexpensive. How much is it just to go to the park? Just a um, few dollars. Weekdays is three dollars, weekends it's four dollars per car. That's per car. That's so you can load them up, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It's funny you mentioned about floating down the river in seven hours. I can't tell you how many times someone said, you know, we should call the, the rescue people because so-and-so left hours ago and they're not here yet. Yeah. Like, no, no, they're, they're floating down. You see, <laughs> it takes a lot longer than people realize. We'll be right back with more of the Valley today. It's Tourism Tuesday. Back. Can we're back in here? Yeah, we go back. Tony so, back to work yet? Have we got any? No. no. Tony goes to my church. Come back. Let's just talk about talk about many species again. It's funny how all of a sudden the tree will be filled with birds and they'll be taking their parents at the feeder, throwing food on the ground, down on the ground, the squirrels are eating it as fast as it come up, comes down. And one of those little birds will scoot in between them and get them stuck in the ground. I have a finch feeder on one side, the suet feeder on the other, and then I'm the closest to the other. I don't like the grain I got this year. I like the corn. Four relics, like four, down the best. The really? Mm -hmm. They love it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> a wide variety. Of uh, I'm interested in keeping finches around here. And, uh, of course, they some fly them. Probably not. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about 
this event is free to attend. Can't believe there's no open range. No, there probably is. There's no open range. There's no open range. There's no open range. It's a little more expensive. You can tell they crashed every piece of equipment. Mm-hmm. Good. Right. So it was like, <coughs> yeah, they got to get you on the wall. I have a chance to do it. I don't know. Oh, you'll just have to do it without me. You're getting a silent treatment, Don the Fever. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> and welcome back to the Valley today. I'm Dan McDermott. Joining me from the Front Royal Tourism Center office. I don't know what the official name it's is. Front Royal uh, Visitor Center. Front Royal Visitor yeah, Center. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, yep. It's a fixture from there. It's uh, Don the Fever and his guest from Shenandoah River State Park. Jennifer Safe. Yes, yeah, Jennifer Safe. Here to join us today and to talk about some of the things that are going to be going on at the park this uh, this month. And uh, it's a very exciting program. And like I say. If you ever get bored in the wintertime, uh, it's, it's your own fault yeah, because you've got a hobby that is just absolutely waiting for you, that's birding. And uh, Jennifer, what they're going to be doing at the park this, uh, on uh, what is it called? Uh, Martin, Luther, Martin King. Luther King Day, which is a holiday, so everybody's going to be off. So you might want to plan on coming down. Give me the hours on that. What's it going to be? Well, it's going to go from 10 in the morning to 11.30. About. Uh, and, and during this, we will get to do what? You'll get to identify birds, hear their sounds. Um, we're going to have a couple different activities for the kids to do um, to learn about bird ad adaptations, uh, the different types of beaks, um, making the bird feeders, and we'll uh, probably also go for a walk uh -huh. uh, down the trail that goes behind the visitor center. Um, it's a beautiful trail. You can see the river, and there's lots of birds. You know the. the <laughs> The trails down at the park are another thing. The park has so much to offer, and the trail is just absolutely gorgeous. But uh, the uh, types of birds that you'll see this time of year are so colorful that all of the gray winter colors go away when you start watching some of these beautiful colored birds show up at your feeder. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking about different types of uh, feed that you buy from birds, and, and usually you can get a mixture at a, a place like uh, well, any of the department stores. Uh, Hey, and, Dan, um, can you hear me? You need to keep it up. If you get it started, you need to keep them fed. And yeah, they get used to, to coming <coughs> to your feeder. And um, they don't necessarily need to be fed all winter. They will look for food elsewhere. But they certainly appreciate having yeah. an easy source of food. Well, they do if, they, if you have a heavy snowstorm. Yes. Their, their food supply is cut off. So mm -hmm. that, of all times, you do need to have a feeder or something out for them during that time. That's one of the things they taught us in elementary school was to <laughs> And I won't tell you how many years ago that was, but uh, uh, to put pieces of uh, dried bread on a string, you know, and hang it out for them this time of year. Well, it worked, and, but the birds need, do need our help in the snows one time. Yeah. And uh, we're going to start this thing on, on Martin Luther King Day at what time? Uh, 10 a.m. 10 a.m., okay. And it's going to run until? Probably 11.30 or 12. Yeah. But it's going to be well worth your while. And there are so many resources to, to, to identify birds. And like I say, they all each have their own distinctive sound. But there are several books on the subject. You can get them at any of the three bookstores in Front Royal. I just checked out the, I just checked out Page Master when it came up. And they have a whole section on them and the, on birds. Uh, Royal Oak Bookstore has the same thing. And so does the Front Royal, uh, the uh, downtown bookstore uh, on Main Street there. But uh, have all kinds of uh, opportunities to check them out. The one that I like the best, I got up in Shenandoah River State Park, but it has uh, little tabs on the end with the different colors. You see a bluebird walk by, you just or walk by. They don't usually walk, but you just see a bird, bluebird flying by. You just turn to the blue section and you locate the bird you just saw. But it's a handy little guide, and there are many of them available. Virginia Department of uh, uh, who, who does that thing? Oh, it's uh, DCR. Uh, Department of Commerce and what is that? Recreation conservation puts right. out a uh, puts out a uh, a brochure on the Western Highlands, all of the birds that you might see down there, and you can pick those up at the visitor center. They're free, but many of those birds are here also. Uh, as a matter of fact, I didn't see any in there that, uh, that really looked foreign to me. Of course, uh, what do I know? I <laughs> sit there looking through a steamed window at them, but uh, I uh, am 100% behind this program. 
but I'm also behind some of the other things that are going on now in the park. I know that uh, you do now have um, uh, full hookup for campers. Yeah. You also have tent sites. Mm -hmm. And a person that wants to come down here and camp, generally, if they call ahead, I, I think you have to call a 800 number, do you not? Is that about right? Yeah. Should be There's a, a uh, reservation that. number. Uh -huh. um, it's 1-800-933-PARK. 1-800-933-PARK. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but I would recommend this year especially calling mm -hmm. early yeah. because we're becoming uh, pretty well known. It used to be the best kept secret in Warren County. Yeah. But, you know, right. And right. there's some neat things like for example <laughs> in a season there's um, bats. Most kids don't get to see a bat up close for any number of reasons. It's probably not a good idea. But um, they've got in the one of the information glass panel kiosks that are uh, um, sort of when you go down the park, you take a left. Mm -hmm. In season, the, the bats just naturally hang out literally in there. And you're right behind glass. And sometimes there'll be 40 or 50 or more bats. And a kid can go right up inches away because there's this glass separating you. And they can actually see what a bat looks like in broad daylight. It's really fascinating. There's so many neat things at that park. They certainly are. That's bats. not exactly bird watching, but well, no, bat, bats are intriguing anyway. They, uh, you can build a bat house, uh, and you, you, have you seen that? Do y'all have one of those? Things? Yes, and actually, um, a lot of Boy Scout troops build bat boxes for us, and we've been hanging them around the park. And they're great nice. because they'll eat about what ten thousand insects a night. Yeah, yeah. each bat, a get thousand a good, an hour. A good wow. crop of bats and a good crop of of, of uh, how, not house well, uh, Bluebirds and what does the other one eats a lot of insects? The uh, the uh, uh, the one that flies straight up. I was telling you about a while ago. Oh, the, the tree swallows. Tree swallows. Yeah, they're one of my favorite birds. I'm a, being an old airline guy. I love to see a bird that can actually literally fly straight up in the air, and these things will do it. They they're the fastest little birds I think I've ever seen. The tree swallows are black and white, and they hit every year like a ton of bricks. All of a sudden, one April, late April day, all of a sudden your yard will be filled with them, and they'll be swooping around trying to find, be the first one to claim the bird boxes around. Yeah. We have a trail in the park called the Colors Trail, which goes to the past, uh, pasture land. And we have bluebird boxes all along the trail. And um, we do get a lot of bluebirds in there, but we have a lot of tree swallows. And they're yeah. just Bluebirds and tree swallows are basically bug eaters, and uh, as opposed to the, the berry and, and seed eaters of some some of the other uh, species. Yeah. But uh, like I say, there's a whole world out there. Uh, you know what? Uh, yo, you've got another event coming on down there. What is that? For? Exactly. Well, for anyone who comes to the um, Winter Birds program and wants to learn even more about birds, uh, we do two things at the park. One is owl banding. And we also do day bird banding. And uh, those are open to the public, and they're free. And the owl banding is going to begin about mid-February and hopefully go until um, the beginning of April. And it's pretty much every night, as long as the weather is not bad, you can come to the visitor center. And uh, our chief ranger, Brett Clawson, is the, is our, runs the banding station at our park. and they set up nets and play the owl call and you know the owls fly into the nets and we band them and record you know their measurements and weights and so you know kids can get to see them up close and we also do the same thing for day birds um, for two weeks in April so it's really neat um, to be able to see them up close. Now, I was wondering how you could attract an owl to actually catch it but uh, yeah you know, I think it's time for us to take another break. Yeah, let's anything? take a break. And on the Friends group, the River Park, the, the website's riverparkfriends.org. Um, that's the Shenandoah River State Park Friends group page. I've got some neat pictures I took of the owl banding. And they're really cute, and they actually, they're small enough to weigh them. They have a Pringles can taped to a scale, <laughs> and they zero it out, and they just put them head first into the Pringles can and weigh it and then pull them back out. Um, <laughs> similar, uh, well, we'll be back with more value today. Why are there no spots? You can talk about the I have no spots. The button's not working. Okay. <coughs> and I got to read. Oh my God, I screwed up. Bad. You forgot to come I forgot to read three ads. Review your insurance policies this December and part of insurance today. 
Whether you rent or own your home, make sure your phone is covered in case of fire. Do you see a list of ads I'm supposed to read? Is that a chance? Sitting around it? I haven't seen it. Here it is. I got it. Hey, really? <coughs> Dan's really doing a good job. And, uh, so I guess this is what goes on inside the studio. Oh, that's true too. Oh, let's do that. Yeah. Huh? No, I haven't watched him before. Then we want to talk a little bit about the fact that we can do her and the paper here. Oh, yeah, sure, that's fine. We'll, sure. We'll talk about a little bit, but uh, what do we going to have time-wise when we come back? We're going to have, um, we've got two minutes, four, we're going to have three minutes. Okay. That's why I was like, <laughs> yeah, well, we'll get into here. Let me make sure I've got the music now. Part of the duty... Can I just hit play there? Yeah. Alright, that'll work. And continues on the river 95.3. Oh my god. Why is one thing still going? And I'm working this I'm good. Is that about the case? Folks, welcome back to the Valley today. I'm Dan McDermott, filling in for Mario Retrosi. It's Tourism Tuesday. One of the wonderful things you can do here is visit Shenandoah River State Park. And uh, Don, you have uh, Jennifer Sake from the park here. To right. Discuss and this. We've kind of got a little group here that I didn't realize we had so much uh, going together. But I understand that uh, that you also, uh, the Warren Sentinel, also produces the park newspaper. Actually, it's the Warren County Report. No, that's is, what, uh, what I say. The Warren Sentinel. No, that's <laughs> um, a different one. That's that's a different one. <laughs> Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, you're, Kevin you're Seabrook's right. like, yeah, yeah, I'll take credit for that. No, but the Warren County Report, and uh, that is a publication that is taking the world by the by the news here, and it's a great publication. But anyway, uh, you also produce their uh, the Parks newspaper. Yeah, we do it free. Um, I just because I was president of the Friends Group when it first started, and so I thought, well, you know, I can. I know how to make newspapers. I got three of them, so we just—I um, just thought it'd be neat to make an annual newspaper, just full of little park information, tidbits, that kind of thing. And you can get that online at the RiverParkFriends.org website, or you can. There's two issues so far, and we just do it every year. And I pay the staff. I think one year they paid some staff to lay it out, but I just paid it this year. And all they have to do is pay for the printing, and then we sell ads, and they get the money. They make—I don't know one or two thousand dollars from it every year and it's a great advertising piece with lots of information for people they just give it out to everyone who visits the park so that's another great thing that the Warren County report does for the for the area appreciate yeah, the plug appreciate unsolicited plug no it's it's great but anyway Jennifer let's get back to this and make sure everybody knows when this is going to be and they better come on down to the park and enjoy it because it's one of the greatest pastimes as you can imagine you want to go over the date again it is it's Monday January 16th at 10 a.m. at the Park Visitor Center. At the Park Visitor Center. And of course, that's eight miles down Route 340, just below Front Royal, before you get to Bentonville. Close your, no, don't close your eyes and turn right. But when you get down big, where the road widens, that's where you turn right to go into the park. As you drive in, you'll get a view of the Mass Nut Mountains. And uh, it, it's worth the trip in there to stop off at the Overlook just before you get to the, uh, to the uh, uh, park itself. Well, it is part of the park, but uh, that overlook, the view from there of the South Fork of the Shenandoah with the Massanut Mountain as a black backdrop has been sort of an icon that uh, our previous uh, tourism director has been using very successfully in her advertising, and it's a, a great, great shot. It is. Yeah, and we're just glad you could join us today, and uh, we're going to look forward to doing this again, and whenever you have anything else going down there, we will talk about it.
Dan, you had something over there you need to talk to us about? I got to tell a couple things here that I screwed up and didn't do before. Um, I want to say Blue Ridge Opportunities has proven through pride and dedication that citizens with disabilities can be a part of our working community. Since 1992, Blue Ridge Opportunities has been fulfilling our local business needs in bulk mailing, secure document shredding, packaging, and small parts assembly services. Let Blue Ridge Opportunities bid for your work. Call 540-636-4960. Blue Ridge Opportunities, rehabilitating our citizens and working with pride. And Royal Pawn offers layaway. That's the same as cash, no interest, no fees. All payment received go toward merchandise you want. So if you want it, there's no reason to wait. Layaway, always available at Royal Pawn. Royal Pawn now is a jeweler on staff. So, so come say hi to Joey and get your jewelry and watches repaired. Royal Pawn, family owned and operated in Front Royal at 21 Water Street behind the DMV. And Royal Oak Computers presents computer facts. This year, there will be nearly 17 billion devices connected to the Internet. Royal Oak Computers provides in-store and on-site services. There is a wide selection of computer supplies and accessories. And Royal Oak Computers on Main Street in historic downtown Park Royal. So, Don Lefevre, I want to thank you so much. we got 20 seconds. we got 20 seconds. I was just showing her how we can go to Ni River 95.3, and uh, you can do a, you listen to a podcast of today's show if you want to. But, uh, uh, we want to thank you for your help and helping us get this thing put across today. We, we uh, had a lot to talk about. Awesome. Thank you. <coughs> Man, Murphy's Law. It, it, um, I wrote the book. Hey. How do I unmute? I don't know. Hey, guys. Hey, Dan. How's it going? Good. You want to say hi to say hi to Google? Hey, Google. We got an on-air hangout. You can see them. Oh, you can well, see them. And um, who is it down there? Two guys, uh, Tristan and Anthony, and uh, whoever's watching. Here, I'll show you. This is. Um, oh, look at here. This is who you were talking to there. Wait a minute. You want to position that mic or the? Yeah. See, you're here, right? Oh, okay. Oh wow. Hey. Hello. Hey, great. <laughs> I'm hanging out from school. There you are, right there. He's, are you playing hooky? No, I'm actually in the building. Oh, neat. It's lunch so period, so I came by. Uh, with his laptop on Wi-Fi at school. Oh, good, oh, good. Um, this is being, uh, this is an on-air hangout on Google+, Plus. so ah, this is a live YouTube that player. Cool? Cause, um, I can broadcast live on the site, so I don't know how many people watching. There could be people watching all over the world. That's really neat. And this guy's playing hooky. I'm going to have to check out his equipment before he gets away from here. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a free, it's free. Um, anybody can hang out on Google Plus. It's, uh, wow. it's like a, it's up to 10 people can be in the room at once. And it can be Golly. anywhere. I've had people from Egypt. One time I had a uh, young woman in Libya mm -hmm. the day after Gaddafi got killed. Oh, I was really? in her live about what's it like to be safe. I mean, what's going on over there? I'm doing that through that the Arab Spring stuff in Egypt. I was interviewing a guy in Egypt. Uh, um, hey, Dan, I posted a link to circlecount.com. I just found out about today. You can um, track all the countries where all, their, where all people are following you from. Yeah, um, I, I think, isn't that just who you circle, not who circles you? No, I've, I haven't circled all those people, so uh, I think it's... It's only people that have public profiles, I think. Interesting. That's crazy. It's technology. Yeah, it really is. Huh? Thank you, It's passed me up, man. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. That is awesome. This was fun. Well, it was yeah. fun, and it's sure good to see you again. It's been, yeah. a, been a while. I'm going to try to get some live music in here one more time. Mario told me not a, never again after we had a debacle up at the... Uh, up at the uh, what is it, the Roller Computer Shop up there where we're trying to get everybody up in the window. They had a stand-up bass and, and several guitars and fiddlers and everybody was jabbing each other in the ribs, so we're not going to try that again. It's kind of a small stage. <laughs> yeah, it was. But this is really it used to be great. This yeah, it is. And I know we had some very successful shows before that way. Yeah. Park so Live Entertainment. The one guy with the acoustic, uh, big the acoustic. Yeah, yeah. And then you have the big bass guy. Yeah, that's it, it, yeah. it just sounded fantastic. Yeah. Almost like a studio. Yeah. <laughs> it really, well, it's almost yeah, just it's only, I, I told you about that, that guy right there. The, the, the Fred, Fred, Fred Abernathy. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's about 90 pounds wet. Look at that. Yeah, he and I grew up. And, and All right, I got to go, guys. He, yeah, he showed See. up on the scene when I had a little country music band back in 19. Uh, 
49 or 50 somewhere, and he played steel guitar in our band, and I'll tell you, he was quite a musician. He, uh, I got to know him pretty good, and I had, thought he just disappeared from sight, and here he is, a picture of him right here. So, <laughs> I understand he was on the air here for many years. Hmm. Yeah, I was, uh, that picture's probably in the 40s, I guess. Yeah. Oh, it'd have to be. Dan, thanks again. Hey, thanks. God bless, and I sure do appreciate the work you guys have on that newspaper. Oh, oh it's, work. it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's a great Yeah, it's a way for them to make some money, and it's not hard for us. Yeah. There you go. Probably the coolest Spark newsletter in yeah. the state, I bet. Oh, yeah, people love it. Yeah. They really love it. Um, anyway, you nothing know, you in the park. You could use the same content every year. It's like with Owl Bay, and that'll be yeah. good for years. Exactly. Yeah, you, know, you can put new stuff and update it, but it's really not that challenging. The first one was a little challenging, but the second one, you know, we just updated a few things, a lot of the same advertisers. It's just, yeah, it's cool because it's the visitors enjoy it. It's great advertising for the friends group in the park, and they yeah. get money in the process. It's a win-win. Yeah. So, well, we'll have a great one. Thank you. And thanks, yeah. thanks for everything you do. My pleasure. Take care, man. Hey, Anthony. Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta get out of the studio because they gotta come and record ads and stuff. All right. Anyway, have fun.